Good evening, <laughs> and welcome back to 100 Days of Believing Bigger. Today is, well, we did day nine, and day nine was knowing God hears you, and now we have day 10. Okay, I didn't see the day on here, so it kind of threw me off a little bit, but day 10, we're still in the section of trust, um, and the name of this is Remembering Eternity. If you're watching on YouTube, then you see I have a little guest here. Um, so hopefully she is down for the ride. Okay. So remembering eternity, let's jump in. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8 and 28 in the English standard version. Your girl knows what ESV is. Come on now. Life doesn't always make sense. Come on, somebody. It's natural to anxiously wonder whether it's all going to work out. Faith says that we believe God to be bigger than our circumstances and that he can do anything and everything. Okay, faith says that we believe God to be bigger than our circumstances and that he can do anything and everything. But God isn't a performer waiting to fulfill the latest desires of your heart. Yes, God is the provider. He is also father. The core of our relationship with God and God's relationship with us is love. Love is like a portal that invites us into the protective covering and supernatural plan of God. It's so easy to forget that we're part of something bigger than what we know. My God, let me, let me go highlight that. God sees every moment. And strategically interweaves our moments, joys, and frustrations into the lives of others. He doesn't do this for us to please us or satisfy us. He does this for the master purpose, which is eternity. Our trust in God must first be based upon a firm reliance in his undeniable love for us to never abandon us. And then we must trust that what's happening in our lives is actually working together for a good that is eternal and magnificent. This is such an on-time word just because of my personal situation, right? Um, so when I go back and I'm remembering eternity, I remember a moment where I was like, man, I'm going to see Smoochie again, you know? And that gave me so much comfort, you know, in that moment, like... This world is really not our home. And when you're grieving, it feels like, um, you know, my friends calls it tricking yourself. But it's really not necessarily a, a trick to yourself. It is honestly just how you feel. You feel like your loved one is just away. Like they're coming back. Like I feel like Smoochie went out of town and forgot to pay his phone bill or something, you know. That's it, that's all. Um, but it's not until I sit in the reality of, you know, what's really going on that it all comes together. But remembering eternity gives me great uh, comfort. But this scripture is just all that I've been saying because God has been really confirming that all things work together. There are no wasted experiences, and God does all things well. Um, and he works them together for those who are called according to his purpose, which means if he didn't have a purpose for your life, then he wouldn't have a method to the madness. You know what I'm saying? But because he has purpose for your life, he's already working on your behalf to do what he needs to do in your life in order to get glory. Because your purpose is for his glory. No matter what's going on, no matter what it is, the only reason we have a purpose is so that God can get glory. Even Smoochie had, you know, purpose. His living was purposeful. Um, and God is getting so much glory just from his life, even um, now that he's gone. But let's go ahead and jump into the devotional where it says life doesn't always make sense. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> we know that life does not always make sense. We're wondering why. We're wondering how. We're wondering, you know, what does this mean? 
all those things. And so that causes us to be nervous about things and try to figure it out. But faith says that we believe God to be bigger than our circumstances, that he can do anything and everything. That sound good until you really going through, right? Do you really believe? Do you really trust that? Do you really have faith that um, God is going to do it? And I love that this says that God is not a performer <laughs> waiting to fulfill our desires. Because we shout and we jump and we go crazy over messages that tell us that God going to give us the desires of our heart. God going to do it. God going to do it. When really he will do it according to his purpose. Right? It may not come when or how you want it to come. Um, but he's going to do what he needs to do according to his purpose. And I like that they said that God is um the provider but he is also father i talk about this a lot how man before 2019 i knew god as all of his titles and and deeds that he could do you know i knew him for his deeds that that he could complete for me and one of those is provider being a a provider for me i knew that but to learn him as father i asked him god i want to know your heart you know, Donna uh, McClurkin sings a song that says, I got to know you in a better way. I got to know you in a better way. <laughs> so I love that song because I really understand it now. I got to know him in a better way that he is my father. No matter what I felt like, um, the, the gaps that were happening in my earthly father, my heavenly father, though. Oh, my heavenly father really really pulls it together yeah i hope y'all can hear my baby (laughs) but anyway he's my father and because he's my father i think about yeah i think about how much i think about her how much i care about her needs her wants her desires all those things and how much i prepare for her how much i order on amazon just so she can have what she needs. God is doing the same thing, except he owns Amazon, right? Um, But the core of our relationship is love. Love, love, love. Our father loves us so much. And we just have to remember that, that that love is eternal. It's like a portal that invites us into the protective covering and supernatural plan of God. Love invites my baby into my love invites my baby into my protective covering, right? I have a plan to take care of her. It's not supernatural, it's natural, but because we have a father in heaven, man, we get to experience him supernaturally as father. Yeah. And it's so easy. This is what I highlighted um, this go around. It's so easy to forget that we're part of something bigger than what we know. Losing a loved one makes you feel lost. It makes you feel like you don't know um, what to do next. It makes you feel like, God, what are you doing? What is the what is the true plan? And it's easy to forget that you are a part of a bigger picture. Like... God is up there watching your life and he knows when and how to do things. Um, he's so strategic and he interweaves those moments of joy, frustrations. He does that. Um, and he, he does that to build us up and to really get the purpose out of us. Um, and I'm looking at this line where it says he does not do this to please us or satisfy us. And that kind of sucks to hear because, you know, we want God to be the God of giving us the desires of our hearts. So to know that he's not doing it to please or satisfy us, that means that it may hurt. It means that you may cry. It means that you're going to be frustrated. But. Again, the core of the relationship is love. That's just like when I was little. My mom used to whoop me because she loved me. You know, I know we gentle parenting now, but the whoopings came out of love. I love you and I want you to do well. I want you to do right. I want you to be raised right. I want you to be respectable. And that's all because 
I love you, right? And so that's the same thing with God. He don't want us to suffer. He doesn't want us to, you know, he wants us to enjoy life, right? Um, so he's not trying to please or satisfy us. And, and that also reminds me of when my mama say, I'm not trying to be your friend, right? But this is different because God is our friend. It's such an interesting relationship, which is why I think we have such a challenge to fathom um, the God that we serve. Because our mama said, I ain't none of your little friend, right? But God, even though he's not trying to please us and satisfy us, he still is our friend. And he still is our father, too. So, you know, I'm we're, we're, when we pray, we're going to ask God to help us in that area. Um we must trust, I'm on like the last line, second to last line. We must trust that what's happening in our lives is actually working together for a good that is eternal and magnificent. Again, trust is simply a decision. We've been in working in the section of trust, and I've learned that trust is simply making a decision. I know, can't nobody give you the steps to trust in God. It ain't no steps, but either you're going to do it or you're not, you know. It helps when you know his word. It helps when you have his word hidden in your heart because you can bring it back to remembrance. God bless you. You can bring it back to your remembrance, but I'm telling you, trust is a decision. So what will you decide? You know. All right, let's go to the question. What's happening in your life is connected to a bigger plan orchestrated by God how can this truth help you reframe your current circumstances and build more trust in what God is doing all right so my current circumstances that you know I'm grieving I'm now a single mom um and my life just looks different right now um but the bigger plan when I look at it is just like wow I'm thinking about not just my future but I'm thinking about the things that God aligned in my past I'm thinking about how he had me go to college and he had me go to college and even though I didn't use my degrees I chose entrepreneurship thank god I chose entrepreneurship thank god I made a goal to retire retire from having to do makeup because even now in my season of grieving I don't have to rush back to work I don't have to uh, worry about how am I going to do xyz I have time to just sit and be a mom and and grieve like that right there man man that's part of the bigger plan he knew back then that today would be here right and he knew how he wanted to care for me in this season and I'm so so thankful um for that and so it just helps me to just keep trusting him that he always gonna take care of me that he always gonna do his best by me I love that about him all right, let's go to the prayer. Lord, I don't always understand what you're up to. Sorry, y'all, I ain't had no nap today. Lord, I don't always understand what you're up to, but you are worthy of my trust and surrender. Thank you for choosing me to be an instrument of your holy agenda. What a joy to be included in your eternal plan. It is an honor that God would choose me to be in his plan. Now, do I do I really want to take this role in his plan? No, absolutely not. Please get me out of here. Get me off the strong social list in 2024. I appreciate it. Okay. But to know that me and God, that God looks at me like this, that he says, daughter, I, I, I trust you with this trial. That's an honor. That's an honor. It's an honor. It is. It is an honor. Might not be my pleasure. But it is an honor, right? Um, so let me pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, oh God, that you love us so deep. I thank you that you work all things together for our good. I thank you that uh, we are called according to your purpose, oh God. I thank you that even though life doesn't always make sense, I thank you that you are our good, good father. I thank that. Thank you that the core of our relationship is love. I thank you, oh God, that you have a plan that is bigger than us, that you are so strategic in how you um, choose to bless us, God. I thank you, oh God, that we can trust you. I thank you, oh God, that, um, man, that, 
We are able to look at you as our heavenly father, God. I ask that you repair our relationship with you. God, give us new eyes to view our relationship that you are father and you are friend, God. Help us to really grasp that. Help us to really see your heart. And those who want to know you in a, in a deeper and better way, I ask right now, oh God, that you would show up for them like never before. I ask that you would help us to reframe our current circumstances and give us the spirit of trust. Give us the spirit of gratitude, just knowing that that you have it under control, God. No, we don't understand always, God, but we thank you, God. We know that you are still worthy and we surrender. Um, and we surrender our, our lives to you, every circumstance, anything. How you want to bless us, God, we'll be satisfied, God. Lord, we thank you that we are a part of your eternal plan. <clears throat> and we ask right now that you would help us to continue to remember that this is about eternity, God. This earth will pass away, and this is about eternity. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say amen. 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 I hope you guys enjoyed that, y'all. I hope my baby was not too much of a distraction during this but this was day 10. If you don't have the devotional, click the link down in the description below so that you can grab the devotional too. It has really been a blessing and an on-time word every day. Okay, I will see y'all in the next um, in the next devotional and I hope you enjoyed this one. We shall talk soon. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Yeah. All right. <laughs>